All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Wahawakhwadash, Yahweh, which is the one only true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and true name is Yahweh Shai. I would like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole full elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazakov from the servants of Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much this lesson. That I'm going to go into is Acts chapter 10 verse 14. And we're going to break this precept down. Because you have Christians that will read Acts 10 and 14. And they'll say this is talking about actual foods. Alright this gives them permission to eat crab, lobster, shrimp, pork. Alright they'll use Acts 10 and 14 as an uh, as a uh how can you put it as you they'll use this scripture as a defensive uh scripture to predict that they can eat unclean foods when this is not talking about actual food this is actually talking about cornelius who was an israelite and uh we're going to prove that today and uh lord willing is that's edifying uh salakia so like it. All right, we're gonna uh, prove this today. And uh, the first scripture that I'm gonna read is the scripture that Christians will read. And actually, we'll start. Um, we'll start at verse 13, and we'll read to verse 14. All right, and then we're gonna break this down through the Spirit. This is Acts 10 and 13. And there came a voice unto him. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Verse 14. But Peter said, No, so Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is unclean, common or unclean. So Christians will read this scripture here and they'll predict that Peter was allowed to eat unclean foods. All right. But when you go to Leviticus, the 11th chapter, the Lord gave us scripture, gave us instructions on what food we can eat. And what foods we cannot eat. But Christians will overthrow Leviticus 11 for Acts 10 and 14 stating that this is what the Lord told Peter. So we can eat unclean foods, which is totally wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to read at the top. And we're going to break this down. And we're going to read down to verse 28, 29. All right. So let's read this. <clears throat> Because Acts 10 and 14 was not talking about food, man. Unclean, that you're allowed to eat unclean foods. That was not what that scripture was talking about. And we're going to prove this. Now, this is Acts 10 and 1. It says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the, of the band called the Italian band. So, you know... Just because, uh, you know, Jake will read this scripture right here. They'll say, see, Cornelius was a heathen because he was of that Italian band. But that's not necessarily true. All right. He was in that Italian band, but he was an Israelite. All right. You had Israelites that were in the Roman Empire. They were Roman soldiers. And one example that we can use today is because we're still in the we're still in the Roman Empire. All right. This place called America is modern day Rome. And we got Jakes that's in the Ro in those Roman armies. The, who's the Roman armies today? All right, the uh, uh, the Marines, the Army. Um, what else out there? The Coast Guards, um, the Air Force. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, what else? Army is out there. Um, I can't really think off the top. Um. I said the Coast Guards, the National Guards, those are all the Roman armies today, all right? 
Those are all the Roman armies today, man. And you got Israelites that's in those Roman armies today. Those are the modern-day Roman armies, all right? So just because Cornelius was in the Italian band, that doesn't make him a heathen. All right, now I use my dad as that, but my dad is an Israelite. He's of the tribe of Gad, which is a so-called Native American Indian. In, in, the, in the early 70s, I'll say, yeah, late 60s, early 70s, my dad was in the military. He lived in Japan for five years, and he, he, his rank was a, a, a marksman, all right, a rifle marksman, and he was a sergeant in the military. My dad was a sergeant in the military, so he was a part of a Roman army. Cause he was a uh, uh, and he was in the Marines. He was a sergeant in the in the military in the Marines. All right. I'm just using my dad as an example. So you had Israelites even to this very day. You got Israelites that was in the Roman armies, and you got Israelites today in those Roman armies. Cause those are the modern day Roman armies, the Marines, the sergeants. All right. I mean the Marines, the Air Force, Salakia, the the Marines, the Air Force, the Army, the National Guards. All right, the uh, Coast Guards. All right, those, those are those are Roman armies, man. <laughs> but in this scripture, Cornelius was an Israelite. Yes, he was of that Italian band, but he was an Israelite. All right, so let's read it again. Acts 10 and 1. It says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a Serturian of the band call the Italian band. So just because you hear that, that doesn't mean that he was a heathen. Because watch this. And when I read this little sentence, we're going to go to Acts 2 and 5. All right. Proving this, that Cornelius was an Israelite. Acts 10 and 2. A devout man and one that feared the Most High with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Yahweh always. All right, now let's read from the top. A devout man. So this is talking about Cornelius. He was a devout man. And who are devout men? Let's find out who are devout men. I'm going to see if heathens are devout men or Israelites are devout men. This is Acts 2 and 5. Acts chapter 2 verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men. See, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So, who are devout men? Jews, which are Israelites. Those are devout men. A heathen is not a devout man. All right? Jews, Israelites, are devout men. So, Cornelius was a devout man. He was an Israelite. Acts 2 and 5. It says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So you had, so when you hear, uh, Salakia, when you hear devout men, when you read Acts 10, all right, and verse 2, Cornelius was an Israelite. He was a devout man. And matter of fact, let's get the meaning for devout. Devout. Having or showing deep religious feeling or commitment. And let's look at the similarities to devout. It says, uh, Pious. Pious. Devoutly religious. Religious. Devoted. Dedicated. Reverent. Uh, God forbearing. Believing. Spiritual. Prayful. Uh, prayerful. Holy. Godly. Godly. So devout is godly. Godly men. And who's and what men are godly? Israelites. All right. Israelites. Saintly. Faithful. D dutiful dutiful yeah could consciously or obediently feeling one's duty dutiful so the main word that connects with devout is godly godly so cornelius he was a godly man and only israelites are godly all right so let's go back again acts 2 and 5 and there were dwelling at jerusalem jews devout men so the only men that are devout are israelites godly men heathen are not godly all right esau is not godly you got jake's out there calling cornelius an edomite he was not an edomite edomites are not godly all right it says out of every nation under heaven so there you go 
Jews, which are Israelites, are those devout men. All right. So now we're going back to Acts chapter 10 and we're going to read verse 2 again. So now you know that the, that word devout goes into the meaning of godly. Cornelius was an Israelite. It said Jews, devout men, Israelites, devout men. Those are the only people that are devout is Israelites. Verse 2, a devout man. So Cornelius was an Israelite and one that feared the most high with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Yahweh Mashai always. Now, Cornelius is going to fall into a vision. An angel is going to appear unto him and the angel is going to give him instructions on what to do. All right. On what he should do. This is Acts 10 and 3. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of the Lord coming into him and saying unto him Cornelius. So this angel appeared unto Cornelius in a vision and gave him instructions on what he is to do. All right. What he is to do. It says verse four. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him. Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial memorial before Yahweh Shai. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. So the angel told um, Cornelius in a vision to send men out to get, you know, to get to send men out uh, for Peter. So Peter can go to Cornelius so he can meet him all right now it says and now send men to Joppa Joppa is a city all right it says and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter and he lodged with one Simon which is Peter a tanner whose house is by the seaside he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do so the angel gave Cornelius instructions on what he to do what he is to do in this vision so he, the angel told him to send men, and those men that went to look for Peter were Israelite men. All right, and you had Israelite men again. Remember what I said earlier in the lesson. You had Israelite men that was in the Roman Empire, and Cornelius was a was a high uh, ranked Roman. I mean, uh, Israelite. He was a high ranked uh, Roman Israelite, should I say? All right, because again, you had Israelites. That was in the Roman army. All right. So don't don't slip what I'm saying. I'm not being hypocritical. What I'm saying is you got Israelites that were in the Roman army. And Cornelius was a high ranked Israelite Roman. And that's what I should have said. All right. Because you had Roman citizens. Which were Israelites. Because Peter. I mean Apostle Paul. He was a Roman citizen. But he was an Israelite. Just like we're American citizens. But we're Israelites. All right, so-called American citizens, but we're Israelites. All right, so Cornelius was a was a high-ranked uh, Roman uh, uh, um, soldier, but he was an Israelite though. All right, and he had Israelites that worked under him because he was a high-ranked uh, uh, Roman Israelite. It says, and he lodged with Simeon, uh, Simon, so like it, and he lodged with one Simon. A tanner whose house is by the seaside, he shall tell ye, tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel walked, spank, it says, when the angel which spanked unto Cornelius was departed, so the angel departed from him, the angel gave him instructions of what he is to do. It says, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier. See, so those soldiers were devout, which we read in Acts 2 and 5. Which says devout men. So that tells you Jews devout men. That those were Israelites under him. But they were in the Roman army. So you had Israelites that were in the Roman army. Those devout soldiers were Israelites as well. It says and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. Verse 8. And when he had declared all these things unto them. He sent them to Joppa. Joppa is a Joppa is a city. All right. It says on the morrow as they went on their journey, 
and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. All right, and this is what this is what Peter went to do. All right, it says, and he became very hungry, and would and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So he didn't eat anything. He fell into a trance. All right. He fell into a trance. And when he fell into this trance, this is what it is. A trance is basically a vision. He had a vision just like Cornelius. All right. He fell into a trance. It says, and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descended unto him as it had been a great seed knit at the four corners and let down the earth. Verse 12, it says, Wherein were all manner of four-foot beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. Verse 13, now this is the part where, um, you know, Christians will say that he he was talking about unclean foods that he can that he could eat and that wasn't what it was, this scripture was ta these scriptures was talking about because he remember he fell into a trance which is a vision verse thirteen and there came a voice to him rise Peter kill and eat verse fourteen Peter said not so Lord for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean now in this vision Peter didn't understand what the Lord was trying to tell him he had he fell into a trance but he wasn't able to understand this vision that the Lord gave him all right he wasn't able to understand it he didn't know what this this trance that he was in he didn't know what it was talking about he didn't even understand what 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 his vision was and we're going to get to the part because he's, he's going to go into that he didn't even understand his this vision that he had verse 15 it says and the voice spake unto him again the second time what how Bashimashai have cleansed that call not thou common. Verse 16, it says, This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Verse 17, Now when Peter doubted in himself, because Peter always had doubts, all right? When Yahushai was, was uh, you know, telling him to have faith, to walk on water, he started having doubts. When when Yahushai told him to go out and preach, you know, go feed my sheep, the Lord told him three times. Peter always had to be reminded three times to do stuff. All right. Verse uh, 17. Now, when Peter doubted in himself, because he always had doubts. All right. It says what this vision. See, Peter had a vision. He fell in a trance. Remember, I said that he fell into a trance. He had a vision. Verse 17. Now, while Peter doubted himself. What this vision which he had seen should mean. He didn't even understand the vision that he that he just had. When he fell into that trance, he didn't even understand his vision. So when you read um Acts ten and fourteen, how could he be talking about he 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 he's eating unclean foods when he didn't even understand the vision he just had? He didn't understand it. He didn't understand what 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 the vision that he had, what the Lord was trying to tell him. He didn't understand that. All right. Because he was sitting there trying to figure out what is it that in this vision that the Lord gave him, you know, what is it that the Lord is trying to tell me in the vision? He didn't understand his vision. Verse 17, it says, now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius, those Israelite men that were in the Roman army, all right, it says, had made inquiry for Simon's house, which is Peter's, Peter, it says, and stood before the gate, verse 18, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there, verse 19, while Peter thought on the vision, see, he would, remember, he went into a trance, and he didn't understand what, he didn't understand his vision that he had, so if he didn't understand his vision, why would he say he could eat unclean foods? Cause Acts 10 and 14 is not talking about eating shrimp, crab, lobster. That's not what that's talking about. He didn't even understand his vision that he had. He didn't, he didn't understand it. Verse 19, it says, while Peter thought on the vision. See, he thought on it. 
It says, the spirit said unto him, behold, three men seek thee. Those three men were Israelite men. Verse 20, arise therefore and get down. So this is what the angel told uh, 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 Peter. All right. This is, in, this is what the spirit told him. All right. It says, while Peter thought on the vision, the spirit, this is what the slack, this is what the spirit said unto, unto um, Peter. This is what the Spirit said unto Peter. The Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Verse 20, Arise therefore and get thee down and go with him. See, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And that goes back to that, that, that angel give, you know, coming to uh, Cornelius. All right. The angel coming on to Cornelius when he had his vision. See, so it said, verse 19, I'll read it again. So the Spirit came on to him. See, verse 19, while Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, behold, three men seek thee. Verse 20, arise therefore and get thee down and go with him, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Verse 21, then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius. Because remember, Cornelius had a vision, an angel appeared unto him and gave him instructions on what to do. And he, he followed those instructions. All right. And said, Behold, I am he whom, whom ye seek. So Peter went down to those three Israelite uh, Roman soldiers and told them who he was. It says, What is the cause wherefore ye are come? Verse 22. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion. Yep, because he was, a, he was an Israelite. This is what the, the three uh, Israelite Romans said unto uh, Peter. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man. And one that feared the most high because he was an Israelite. He was a devout man going back to Acts 2 and 5. He was an Israelite. All right. It says, and of the and of good report among all nation, among all the nation of the Jews. Cornelius was an Israelite. It says, was warned from the most high by an holy angel to see, to send for thee into his house. So the angel told him what to do an angel appeared onto cornelius he fell into that trance was that vision all right and the angel gave uh cornelius instructions on what to do while peter went up to pray while he was hungry he fell into a trance because he didn't eat anything he fell into a trance and the, and, the, and, the, and the lord gave him a vision but he didn't understand what the vision was was about he didn't understand the vision he couldn't understand it his own vision all right, it says, and I'll read it from the top, uh, read it right here, verse 22, was warned from the Most High by a holy angel to send forth, to send for thee into his house and to hear, and to hear words of thee. All right, and this is what Cornelius was uh, instructed. Verse 23, then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them. So he went with them to go meet Cornelius, who was an Israelite. It says, and certain brethren from Joppa occupying him. Verse um, 24, and the, and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, Ce Caesarea, if I'm saying it right, Salakia, and Cornelius waited for them. See, so Cornelius was waiting for them. And had called together his kinsmen. Who was his kinsmen? Israelites. All right. Cornelius' kinsmen were Israelites. His people were Israelites. It says, and near friends. Verse, and those near friends are Israelites as well. Verse 25. And as Peter was coming in, see, Cornelius met him and fell to the ground at his feet and worshipped him. All right. And that's what Cornelius did. He saw he saw Peter, all right, and he fell, by, you know, fell before him, got on his knees, and bow, and bowed to him, you know, and worshipped him, bowed before him. And this is what Peter said unto uh, Cornelius, the Israelite, all right, the Israelite uh, 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 foreigner. He was an Israelite foreigner of the Italian band. He was in the Roman army. He was an Israelite in the Roman army. And this is what Peter said unto him. Peter and it says, but Peter took him up, saying, "Stand up, I myself also am a man." So he told him, "Don't worship him, because he's just a man." Verse twenty-seven, 
And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And those were Israelites, man, that came together, that met with Peter. All right. They were Israelites. They were all those former Israelites, man. All right. You had Israelites that were in the Roman army. All right. And Cornelius was an Israelite in that centurion, you know, Italian band. But he was an Israelite. He was a high ranked uh, Israelite Roman or uh, Roman soldier. All right. Verse 28. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto me of another nation. But the most high have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. And let's go back up to verse 14. So what was that that Peter uh, was saying that he never uh, eat to anything common or clean? It was talking about Cornelius because we just read it. Verse Acts 10 and 14. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. So who was this talking about? Cornelius. Verse 28 tells you. Verse 28. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But Yahweh Bashimashai have showed me because he finally understood the vision that he had. Because he had a vision. Remember, Peter, early in the scriptures or early in the lesson, we read that Peter fell into a trance. And he was thinking in the spirit. He was trying to figure out what the vision was. And he found out that the vision that he had going up to that, I have not eaten anything unclean, that it was talking about Cornelius. That's what his vision was talking about. Cornelius. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto me of another nation. But Yahweh Shai have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So when you read Acts 10 and 14, it is not talking about foods, but it was talking about Cornelius, who was an Israelite, man. All right. That's what that scripture was talking about. Cornelius. All right. So that's what that scripture was talking about. All right, it was talking about Cornelius. All right. So, hey, man, we're going to deal with that. It was verse 28. All right, and uh, Louisville and the Stetson was edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Yahweh Kakodash, and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the old full elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers that were scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Razaka from the servants of Yahweh Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And a little wilderness lesson was edifying. So remember, Acts 10 and 14 is not talking about foods. All right, it was talking about Cornelius. So, Lord willingness, that's edifying. Until next time I say, Shalom.